from Magnanimous here, and today we're back in Studio One going live for another Build of the Day. In case you guys are new, this is a series that we're doing every day, Monday through Friday, where we'll be going live, doing a different camera build, highlighting multiple different pieces of gear, putting them all together, and then showing how it all works. If you guys have questions while we're doing this build, comment below and we'll address those at the end of the video. And then if there's gear that you guys want to see, let me know and we'll highlight that in a future build. Today, we're going to be looking at a really awesome lens. Today is the Venus Optics Loa 24mm probe lens. This is a super awesome creative lens, and as you'll notice, it's extremely long, and that's because it has a probe design so that you can put it places that a normal lens can't go. It has uh, a lot of elements inside, uh, both low refractive and high reflective elements, to render extremely low chromatic aberrations and a very sharp image with low distortion. Due to its 24 millimeter field of view, you can get a massive 2 to 1 macro ratio out of it, so you get true real -to life images out of the uh, macro shots that you'll get making it awesome for food photography or nature photography when you're needing to get really close-up shots of insects or food or any details like that. The lens itself is waterproof for the first 20 centimeters of the barrel, so you can actually dip it underneath water. So if you're doing ink water uh, or food coloring in water, cloudy water, things like that, you can actually get inside to get really interesting creative effects from it. Or I've had some uh, food photographers uh, do an ice cream stuff where they're actually were dipping this into the ice cream and getting really interesting shots like that. Features a full frame EF mount on the back, so you can pair it with a lot of different options. We've done a lot of cinema builds this week, so I wanted to highlight one of our really awesome prosumer level mirrorless cameras. So we're gonna be pairing this today with the Sony A7R4. That's this little guy here. And this is the newest iteration in the Sony A7R family of cameras. Features a 62 megapixel sensor capable of capturing 10K raw still images. So you get this massive amount of resolution and information to work with. So if you are doing really close macro detail shots with a probe lens like this, you can get all of that information, punch in even closer in post and get the best quality image that you can. For video, it'll do 4K up to 30 frames per second, or 1080 up to 120. So today we're actually be doing a uh, video build with it because well, it's not fun to just do the camera and the lens. So I'm gonna pair it with our RE SXU follow focus because the uh, Venus probe lens is geared so that you're able to run a wireless follow focus or something like that for really critical focus pulls. So we'll go ahead and build all of that out. And then so you guys can see what I'm shooting, once again, we're going to be pairing with our, our, our uh, Teradex system here. So we'll wirelessly send video to a monitor so that a client or someone like that could see it. Or in our cases, uh, the AC who's pulling focus can have a really nice big display to pull that focus from. So we'll go ahead and start our build up. And today, we do need to adapt the E-mount from our Sony camera because we are going with a full frame EF. So we have a Metabones adapter here. Very effective adapter that essentially establishes the proper flange distance for an EF lens. It's one of the great benefits of mirrorless cameras is they're very adaptable to a wide variety of lens options. In this case, the EF mount. One thing to note though, as we attach our tripod plate here, and I hope you guys can make it out if I arrange this just right, but oftentimes the bottom of our Metabones adapter sits slightly lower than the bottom of our camera. So when I go to attach our camera base plate to this, I am going to attach it to the bottom of the Metabones as opposed to the bottom of our camera. That'll help keep everything nice and flush. We are gonna need to run rails because our RE SXU motor here is gonna need a 15 mil rod to clamp onto. So I have a Red Rock Universal Quick Release here. It's just a really simple quick release. It uses a Manfrotto style quick release plate on the top and then gives us a series of mounting points on the bottom for our tripod plate. So let's go ahead and throw our camera on this base plate here.
And I'll go ahead and run that into the quarter 20 underneath that meta bones. Before I attach my camera to the quick release, though, I do want to go ahead and attach our camera uh, the uh, tripod base plate to our camera here. So we'll go ahead and attach that guy. Make sure you always square up your plate. You don't want your camera to go on your tripod and be slightly crooked. So like there it was a little bit off. So I'm just re-squaring that up to keep everything nice and true. Then we can go ahead and attach camera. In this case, I'm going to purposely set my camera as far forward on my base plate as I can so that when I attach my probe lens, the gears here are going to sit above where my rods are going to be, meaning that motor can attach very easily. Before we throw the lens on, though, I am going to go ahead and attach to our tripod. I don't like running the probe lens not or on camera, not on tripod, unless I'm shooting handheld, just because it is quite long. And so I don't like to have it loose hanging around because I don't want to hit anything with it. Just something to be mindful of. The good thing about the uh, probe lens is that it's light enough that we don't need an extra lens support or something here. Our EF mount can support that weight natively. And then I'll turn this so you guys can see, but the probe lens has a integrated LED ring light in the front. We'll get our close up here. And that integrated ring light can be powered off of a small battery pack. Our kit always includes two USB battery bricks for you to power it off of. And we give you a small uh, mounting clamp here. And I'm just going to attach this to the top of our camera. I'll take this cold shoe mount and thread it into the bottom of our battery mount clamp. And like we talked about with the uh, camera base plate, always make sure that you're tightening stuff down with it straight because we don't want to mount it to our camera here and it be off-centered or something like that. But we'll go ahead and tighten that guy down. And then this is our battery plate here. Or our, I'm sorry, the, the battery itself. And this is just a 65 or 1600 mega amp USB power block. And the attachment here is just a small tension lock, so I'll just pull to the side, and the battery mounts like so. And then I have a small white USB cable that I'm going to run from the micro USB plug here on the side of our lens. And I'm just going to run this over. Let's go ahead and cable the excess a little bit so we don't have that hanging around. And I'll plug that into the USB power on our top. And then you'll see the little blue light turns on, and now I can power on our LED in the front, and I can use the arrows here to dim the output up or down. For our purposes today, we're going to run with a pretty low output because we're going to do a macro shot of some almonds, so we're going to need to get real up close with that uh, detail. The lens itself is an f14, which is a very closed down stop but it's due to the large amount of elements within the probe lens and the long length of it. It just relates to a very uh, closed down aperture value. Uh, so you are going to want a lot of light. The LED ring light in the front I found extremely helpful for extremely close detail shots, especially when ambient light is going to be low. If you're doing nature stuff and you're actually sticking this into a uh, log or something like that, this LED ring light on the front is going to be critical for getting a good exposure for your shot. I'm just going to take a spare twist tie and I'm going to cable this cable a little bit. I just don't like excess cable hanging around my rigs. I think it gets in the way 
I know I've talked about it in almost every video I think we've done, but I think it's just critical to a good camera build is making sure your cables stay nice and clean so you don't have excess stuff hanging around. Now we'll go ahead and run our rails. Today I was very careful to pick a set of rails that would be long enough to be in the uh, front of our camera so that we have some to attach our motor. But I do need to run a brick battery pack to power that in the Teradek. So I made sure I have enough excess on the back here to still mount that battery plate. Now for the battery plate, I have it mounted on this vertical cheese plate. So one of the really cool benefits of it is it has a series of quarter 20 and 3 8 mounting points on here. And I can take the articulating arm for our Teradek and I can just thread that into this cheese plate. Because we're already using our cold shoe for that USB battery block, this comes in very handy as an alternative mounting point for additional accessories like the Teradek. So I can go ahead and mount this on and then mount my battery plate. And then anytime I'm powering multiple accessories off of one battery, I'm always sure to have a multi-tap here. One of my least favorite things to do in a camera build is have to unplug my accessories when I need to swap a battery. It's just so annoying to have to power everything off, reattach a battery, plug all the cables back in. So the multi-tap gives us four outputs from our one output so that I can cleanly release battery, replace it with a new one, and not have to worry about pulling cables to do that swap. I will then go ahead and mount our RESXU motor here. You'll notice there's a big antenna sticking off because this is an RF motor. And one of the benefits of that is I don't need a control box or anything to run signal from my handset. This actually has that built straight into the motor itself. So I don't have to mount very many accessories on to do that focus control. And so I'll run this back. One of the unique things about the uh, probe lens is your focus is actually in the back. It's part of the reason I set my camera so far forward is so that I could get a good attachment here with my motor on that focus ring in the back. And we'll go ahead and open all the way up to a uh, T14 there. Now it's just a matter of running all of our cable. First we'll do power for our SXU motor, which is off of this cable here. And we're going to run it into the L bus connector on the bottom. That carries uh, not only power, but if we were to pair this with a Alexa Mini or Alexa Classic, it can connect to their L, L bus connector and carry uh, camera information and metadata and things like that, as well as just power for the motor. I'll plug that into my multi tap there. And then we need to go ahead and attach our Teradek. And then I'm just going to arm that out over to the side here so it's out of the way and we have our antennas with a good signal there. And then if you're familiar with the A7 series of cameras, you'll know that they feature a HDMI micro output. Uh, anytime I'm doing an HDMI connection, but especially when I'm doing a mini or micro, I'm always sure to use an HDMI port lock. And that's so that the cable doesn't get disconnected or pulled as I'm building or operating. HDMI are known to be fairly unreliable connectors. They come loose very easy and they get disconnected or pulled or something like that. So we're going to run the HDMI port lock to make sure that our cable stays connected to camera. And there's really a two stage for connecting that. First, I'm going to undo the cap here, which is just a thread off and I'm going to run my cable through that little channel. Then we'll tighten the top down, but I'm only going to tighten it enough that my cable stays within that channel and it kind of captures it within there because I don't want to tighten anything down quite yet. I'm not ready for that. Then I'm going to need to run my HDMI into 
the HDMI part here. And the nice thing about this port lock is it actually labels which section of the port lock is designed for which uh, cable. So in this case, I can run my HDMI into the top there. And I'm just going to plug that into the side of camera. And then we will run the port lock into the side. There's a small screw here that's going to run into the side of the camera. So we'll just tighten it down there. Now once that's secured, I'm going to use this twist lock here to basically establish a right angle to my cable. And I'm just going to tighten that down enough that it locks that cable in place. Once I've tightened that enough, you'll see that as I pull on the cable, it's pulling here and not at the port itself. That way, if something were to get caught or something like that, my cable doesn't pull out from the side of camera and I lose connection. This is great for just about any setup, but especially for gimbal purposes or any time you're going to have a bunch of camera movement, it's extremely important to use that port lock to make sure you have a good connection. Now I'm just going to cable my excess because we have a pretty long HDMI cable here and we only need to travel a short distance. And I found the back of our 15 mil rod clamp, uh, once we've established the position of everything, is very helpful to use as a uh, cabling point. And then it just takes one twist tie to tie all my cables together. keep everything nice and clean. Lastly, we just need a two pin limo power for our Teradek here. And we'll run that down into our multi-tap. There we go. And now we can go ahead and pop in a battery on our camera here. And go ahead and power everything up. Anton Bauer 90 watt hour brick battery on the back. Teradex up. And now we need to do a calibration on our SXU. The great thing about the Ari SXU is that it's pretty plug and go and very straightforward in its calibration. I'm going to power up my handset. And you just have to make sure that your RF motor and your handset are set to the same frequency. I preemptively did that. I set everything to channel 3. And as soon as those connect, it'll see that it's connected. And it'll ask you if you want to calibrate. I'm going to tell it yes and make sure that the motor has a clean view there. And you'll notice that it's running down the line of my focus, finding the two hard stops on each end. And once it's done, I now have full control of my focus there. You guys don't really have a way to see that though, so why don't we set up a pretty cool macro shot. I've got some almonds set off screen here, and we're going to run a extremely close macro shot of these guys for you. One of the nice things about the Sattler V20 head that we're running today is that the plate here moves. So if I'm doing a macro shot like this, I can actually just slide my camera down to get closer and set the distance I want from my subject. The probe lens is amazing in that it has a 0.8 inch working distance. So I can quite literally get right up next to whatever it is that we are wanting to focus to and it can still be in focus. We'll make sure our LED light is on.
and get our tarot deck turned on. I'm going to wheel our monitor around so you guys can see this. And it's fairly dark right now, but that's the great thing about the LED light, is that I can just bring this up when I need to, to set my exposure. And then I can walk away, and even though I'm off screen now, I can still adjust that focus and do a good focus pull. Of course, getting a proper exposure with this is going to require some fine tuning. The LED ring light on the front is not going to be ideal for every shooting scenario. So you are going to want to light this, and because it's an F14, it's very hungry for light. So make sure you're using you know, some good, strong lights there. But uh, yeah, once you get it set up, very easy to work with. And then you'll notice that we can get so close to those almonds and pull out every little bit of detail there to really get a really awesome macro shot. An extremely unique lens that not much out there really can match. So if you guys are interested to check it out, visit us at magrinse.com or just give us a call. And uh, yeah, let's see if you guys had any questions about this build. Did you have somebody ask you about the waterproof functionality of the lens? Yeah, so the uh, question was about the waterproof nature of the lens. And that is for the first 20 centimeters up here. That's all sealed to be completely waterproof. It's basically all the way up to just before this micro USB clamp here, where you'll see the white cable running in. And that whole working distance is waterproof. So we can actually dunk that underwater. Uh, I had mentioned before I had some clients uh, shooting ice cream, and we're dunking into ice cream sundaes and things like that. Uh, and that's just because it's all sealed. You're going to need to clean it between uses because I've found that residue can get on the front element just in the top of it. So make sure you have a cloth to clean it and keep that clean. But uh, yeah, the whole area here would be waterproof. We've had a question again about the model of the lens and if you want to run through just the, the overall setup one more time. Yeah. This is the Venus Optics Loa 24mm f14 probe lens. And it's a specially designed macro lens with a two to one macro ratio. And it's designed to be able to go places no other lens can. We we're mentioning the waterproof nature of it. And due to the extremely small barrel design, you can actually stick it into places to shoot and you won't have to worry about that water or residue or things getting on it. So it fits extremely well for food, nature, or product shots, because I think it's uh, really unique to go inside a product. I've seen some really cool stuff with pizza boxes and water bottles with this lens. We have it paired with our Sony a7R 4 here, which can shoot 4K 30 or 24 video and still images up to 10K resolution in RAW. So we're going to render a massive amount of uh, picture information there to really dial in how we want this to look. And then we're running a Teradex system and then the RE SXU follow focus to this handset here so that I don't even have to touch the barrel of the lens to pull my focus. I do it all from this little handset right here. Any other questions we have? All right. Well, if anything else pops up that you guys want to know about this, comment below and we can answer those down the line or in a future video. And uh, that's all we have for this week. So I'll plan to see you guys next Monday. If you are looking to stream at all, we're streaming live from our Studio 2. And our partners at PerfectCircle.pro can hook you up not only with an operator, but with the gear to help with the stream as well. To take all that weight off of your shoulders, we'll come out, help you set everything up so you can focus on the creative side. I think we may have had another question while we were closing out. No, never mind. Well, that's all I got for you guys for this week. I'll plan to see you Monday at 5 for another build of the day. Otherwise, have a good weekend.